Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J Holiday Inspiration Card Class. And today I will be sharing how to make this nearly one layer card. And it is such a happy little snowman in the stamp set today and I had so much fun making this card. Real quick before we begin, I just wanted to share a list of all the supplies I'll be using in creating the card today. And I will put that back up on screen at the very end of the video. So if you want to check it out in more detail, you can hit pause at that time. So like I said, I just love the snowman from this new Penny Black Transparent Set Christmas Bunch. And there's some other really great images in here too, which I'll be sharing another video coming up with one of those. Um, and to begin, I am stamping this onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper, and it's cold press. And I'm stamping this using Memento ink in the color of Toffee Crunch. And then I'm also stamping it onto a piece of masking paper, which I will then cut out to create a mask for the snowman. I chose this ink because it will very subtly blend when I add water but it's light enough to give the look of no line watercolor and now I'm going to add the trees from our transparent set called peaceful I love these trees if you like to do this type of scene building these trees are great you can use them with cute images like the snowman or just do them alone for a real elegant looking card and I'm just going to position them right here going across the card and playing around here with the placement, the snowman does have the mask on it, so these will be slightly layered behind him, especially over for that tree on the left hand side. And I'm going to ink these with Wendy Vecchi Make Art Blendable Dye Ink. And this is in the color of fern green. And I've chosen this ink because it will blend when I add my watercolors on top. So this ink, and it also has a beautiful color. I love that it's bright without being like limey looking. Um, so you'll see that here as we get stamping and painting with it. So I am going to stamp this a few times. This watercolor paper does have some texture to it. So in order to get all of that detail down, you to just stamp it a few times and that's why the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool is so handy. Um, and I also want to make sure to get down a lot of the ink onto the surface of the paper so that when I go to blend this, I can take advantage of those layers of ink. So I'll remove my mask and I'm ready to get painting. But before I do so, I'm just gonna add in these black details. And I'm using a Pit Artist pen. And this is the small, very fine tip pen. And I'm just coloring right on top of where I stamped that with the Toffee Crunch ink onto the buttons and his eyes and his mouth and then also his arms. And if I remember, I like to try and do this step at the very beginning. In case I goof up, <laughs> then I can, I haven't painted the whole thing and then goof up on an eyeball or something. So I'm going to paint this using my Sakura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors. And I just showed you there what I'm working with. I'm not doing any blending on a separate palette. I'm just picking them straight up out of the Field Sketchbox. But you could do this with any kind of watercolor medium that you prefer. And I'm going to start with the trees. And I'm starting by putting the paint near the bottom of that sort of level or layer of the tree. And I'm mixing that and blending it. And the ink that it was stamped with is also going to start to blend as well and lift and move a little bit. Some of it will remain and some of it blends. I find it's just like the perfect balance of not just totally washing away, but also um, blending and not looking too much like an outline. I dropped in a couple colors of green and then I'm going to move up to another layer that is not touching that while I wait for that to dry. And just to keep this balanced, I'm doing sort of darker near the bottom where the stamping is and then lighter as it moves up towards the top. I put in a lighter color of green while it's still wet. I drop in a little darker and then I move on to the next level if I need to, or layer I guess you would call it of the tree. And I don't want to do any that are touching while it is still wet. That's why I'm kind of skipping a sort of layer of each tree. And then you, I will dry that with my heat gun before I go back down and add more. You can see here I decided I really wanted to darken that up. So while it's still wet, I can just drop in a darker green and then move up. And I just followed that same process for all of the trees. If they get more blended than you wanted, don't worry. We're going to add lots of snow onto the top of this with the white gel pen, and it will hide any imperfections in your trees. So just get down the colors that you like. You could even mix some blues in there and have sort of a turquoise look to the trees, and that would be really beautiful too. There's so many different ways you can do those trees following that technique. 
Now for the snowman, I'm just adding a little bit of gray around the edges and areas that would sort of be in shadow. And this will give him more dimension and give it a more finished look rather than just leaving the snow as a white color. I put down my darkest color where, or I put down the color where I want it to be darkest and then blend it out using more water on my paintbrush. I also added, after I put down all the gray and it was still a little bit wet, just a littlest touch of blue to some of those areas. And then I'll begin working on the hat. And I'm working on the top of this hat here uh, while the snowman portion of my painting is drying. Just putting down some gray and water and playing around with the blending on that. I spent a lot of time uh, painting and sort of fiddling around with this hat and you really don't need to. I'm going to go back and use some colored pencils here at the very end and that will allow you to add some shading exactly where you want it to be and have a little bit more control. So this layer with the watercolor on the snowman is really just about being able to put easily put light colors down that blend into white in those open areas and just applying large expanses of color which for me is easier to do with watercolors than it is with colored pencil. We'll just get some other portions of the hat here. And just blend that out. There's so many different color combinations you could do with this for the snowman. If you wanted to send this um, not at Christmas time, you could do any color of on his scarf or to suit the recipient, maybe pinks and oranges. Um, I'm going for more of a traditional look by uh, painting his scarf in shades of red and sort of a light red color. And I'm just keeping it pretty simple on the scarf too and just putting down a very watered down version of a red from the palette. And then I will just add a darker red once that's dried up a little bit and it's safe to put it right next to it. I will put a darker red and it's using the same color from the palette, just more intensity. So putting more paint than water onto my brush. And I apologize, I'm not showing the palette that I'm working off of because I find if I do that I have to pan out on the video and it's just difficult to see um, what I am painting. But there are not a lot of colors in this field sketch box and so, and I'm not doing any blending with them on a separate palette. I'm just picking them straight up off of the watercolors as they come and putting them onto the paper. So I'm going to make sure that that is dry before I move on to my next step. And I'm just going to do this little part on his hat. So I didn't want any of that hat to still be wet when I went in and colored the band with the red. Now I dried everything again and I'm going to add some color here for the sky. I wanted to keep with sort of a homespun look, but I wanted some contrast between the snow and the ground that's at the base of the card and the sky that's up at the top. So I decided to go a little non-traditional and put just a little bit of brown, a very watered down brown up here. And I really love the way that turned out. If you wanted to do something a bit more traditional, blue would look really nice up there, very light blue. And I'm just putting that darker color near the trees and then working my way out towards the sky with more water on my brush. So there I'm going back with more water to blend that out and make it lighter up near the top. And I will dry that before moving on. I use a heat gun to speed up the process. You could also just be a little more patient than me and wait. Now I'm going to add some shadow down here on the trees. Now that green ink that I've stamped with is going to re-blend a little bit when it gets wet. That's what made it so easy to do the painting of those trees in the background. And so I picked a blue 
color to do uh, the sort of shadowing and as it mixes with the green that is stamped you get that beautiful turquoise color. So here on the snowman I wasn't getting that same look from the blue so I actually just grabbed a little bit of green paint from the palette while it was still wet I just dropped that in and mixed it with the blue on the paper as I was painting. just continuing to do that up at the top. The lines and everything are right there part of the stamp so you don't have to worry about where to um, add that shadowing or where those snow bakes should start and end. Now once everything was dry I am going in with the colored pencil and just adding some additional shading and darkening things up with those reds on the scarf. I find this is such an easy way to go in and really enhance the colors of the watercolors. Also, like I said, on up on the hat, I have just a little more control on the shading. Makes it a bit easier uh, for such a dark color like the, the black and the grays. Now I'm going to add some snowflake stamping up in that sky and I'm using the snowflakes that are from the same set where we got the trees, the peaceful set from Penny Black. And I'm just going to position this back into my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. I've put three of those snowflakes on and I'm just going to stamp them with a toffee crunch. That's the same color we actually stamped the snowman in. And I will reposition them and stamp them again. If you wanted that even lighter, you could use like an antique linen and just do repeated impressions in the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool until it was the darkness that you liked. Finally, the last thing we're going to add to this card is the sentiment, and this is from the Penny Black set called Winter Sentiments, and I just love every sentiment that's a part of this. Today I'm using the one Take Time to Chase the Snowflakes, which is great for Christmas or any type of wintry card that you may want to send. I'm inking this with Water and Can Miniature Archival Ink, and I've chosen this ink because I love the color. It is, when I stamp it a couple of times here in the Misty, it darkens up to be like a nice sort of charcoal color that ties in really well with the color of the snowman's hat. And then since the sentiment is all about snowflakes and we have a snowman, I'm just going to add some in here to the panel using my white gel pen. Like I said before, this is a great way to hide any imperfections in your trees. If it's blended or looks a little blobby or too dark in any areas, make sure to add some snowflakes there and it will just finish everything off. So here's a look of at that finished card and I thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel you can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook Pinterest Instagram Twitter as well as our website and blog and I will link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below and here's a look at all the supplies used